All right, everybody. So with the tax season coming up, I have to bring somebody in here to give you guys the best information you possibly can, because quite honestly, taxes scare the living hell out of me. So David Kemmer from CoinLedger, founder and CEO, welcome to the show for like the umpteenth time. I appreciate it. It's always good to be back. You know, thanks for having me back, Rob. Yeah, absolutely. So everybody, if you don't know, I've been using this service for this will be our third year straight. April 15th is coming up rapidly here in the States, and it is the ability for you to pull in all your data to do all your taxes that you need to do. And uh, you guys have over half a million crypto investors. I'm pretty sure you have a lot more of that now. You can easily import historical data. There's an API integration where it's read only, no writes. Uh, so like they just can pull the information and that's about it. Export and file. You guys have a, it looks like an integration with TurboTax. I don't use TurboTax. I have a, my own CPA, but and then also international tax reporting, which is pretty cool. So any new new things going on with the, with the platform before we get into the questions, David? Yeah, the big one, which we've worked with you a good amount on is starting to really roll out our portfolio tracking product, which, you know, mm -hmm. if anyone is familiar, CoinLedger has been mostly a tax reporting first platform for really the past four and a half, five years. And now we're bringing more real time, completely free portfolio tracking. So, you know, we're already bringing in a lot of your transaction history. And now we're giving you dashboards to understand your holdings across all of your wallets, you know, how long you've been holding those assets, tax loss harvesting mm -hmm. opportunities. Um, and that's going to launch to a more public um, beta here in the next week. And so if anyone wants access to that, just ping me and we can get you right in actually right now. Perfect. So there's gonna be a link in the description and uh, we can go from there. And uh, you guys can sign up for the portfolio tracker, which is again, is gonna be 100% free, which I think is a real winner. If you're going to like, it'd be great if you can like say, what's my profits and loss? If I sell right now, what's gonna happen? And then also, oh, all everything's there. And then I can kind of roll that into with my CPA or generate reports and then bing, bing, boom, I'm done. Because time is money. Let's just exactly. Comes down it's just like a great top of funnel marketing thing for us because this is a free product. We can build trust with people. They can interact with our brand for free, track their stuff. Once tax season rolls around, if they want to download their tax reports from us, you know, they'll pay 50 bucks or whatever to get those. And so free portfolio tracking, monetize it with tax reporting at the end of the year is, you know, we've seen is a good formula. Yeah, it's pretty easy. And then like, as a reminder, everybody, if you've got like five or 10 transactions, this really isn't for you. I'll be honest with you. You can probably figure this out, but if you're kind of like us and you've done some DGENY type stuff, this might be uh, something to look into. So again, it goes from, of course, free and you can, you can generate the reports to 50 bucks to up to $200, which again, I got to tell you, it's just time is money and I just would rather do it this way. So David, let's get into it and let's talk about first things first, which is I put this in X and I asked the question, like, who's got questions for Coin Legend? We're going to go over all those questions, but can we back up for a second and just talk about the basics? What is an actual taxable event as determined by uh, tax services or IRS? Yes. So it's pretty straightforward. You know, there's a lot of tax language that makes it sound complicated, but it really is straightforward. So crypto is a form of property just like stocks. I'm gonna make that comparison because they're treated pretty much identically. In that, if I purchase Bitcoin for $100 and it appreciates, appreciates to like $500 over the course of some period of time, and I sell that same Bitcoin, I realize a $400 capital gain, which is income on my tax return. And the same works with stocks, right? If you buy a stock for some amount of money, you sell it for more, that's income. Now, one caveat to crypto is often, all, in addition to trading crypto, people earn cryptocurrencies, whether yeah. that's through staking, maybe you're getting paid in crypto from your job, maybe you're mining crypto. And that's not capital gains, that's just ordinary income. If I received you know, one ETH from staking, I'm re re receiving ordinary income for the fair market value of that e Ethereum when it hit my wallet. Right, right, right. It was $2,000. And that's really the basics. It's property. If you realized income by trading or by earning, that's a form of income that's taxable income in the United States. What about and and in most countries? Yeah, in most countries. And it's the same thing also if I want to pay for services, right? So if I bought Bitcoin for a dollar, it goes with 100000 and someone goes, hey, pay me 100000 and I'll wash your house or whatever. Wash your car. All right, here you go. Here's a Bitcoin. I am going to have to pay not only that guy, but the there is a taxable event, correct? Exactly. And to your original question, what is a taxable event? It's when you dispose of 
property. In this case, it's when you dispose of crypto. So whether that's disposing it is trading it for another coin, mm -hmm. or as you mentioned, spending it on goods or services, you are disposing of property. And at that disposal point, at that time, that's when you realize that capital gain or capital loss, but that taxable event. Gotcha. And so again, this isn't about moving between wallets. You can move uh, di different cryptos between wallets as much as you possibly want to, but that's not a taxable bank. You're not disposing of it because you still have that controls just uh, to keep that clear. Okay, great. So that's the basics of crypto. Let's go into the questions. And the first one, this is the one that everybody's asking me. And I even had this question, which was this, can we now claim the Voyager, Celsius, FTX, or any hacked wallets that we have as far as last year? because this has been an ongoing process, but right now Voyager and Celsius have gotten out of the bankruptcy. So how does this work, Dave? Yes, so <clears throat> I can speak very intimately to Voyager. Obviously we have worked to bring automated tax reporting to their users for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not as intimately familiar with the details of how Celsius went about their dis dispose dispersion process of bankruptcy, but let me just tackle it from Voyager at a high level and right. you can jump in with questions that you have. So, you know, in July of 2022, um, or maybe it's June, Voyager officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and all users lost access to move or you know, do anything with crypto on their platform. It was locked up. Yep. Now, you know, about a year later, they started their in-kind distribution process, which is, you know, they're starting to give people um, assets back, but of course, at a much lesser amount um, yeah. than they had. So it was about... 35% were made available to customers. So the details on the Voyager side, they were either supported or non-supported assets in the Voyager bankruptcy process, which essentially just meant if it was a supported asset, Voyager had the ability to allow you to transfer it off of the platform once you the, the asset was available to you again. Right. If it was a not supported asset, that means they just didn't have the blockchain rails to allow you to move it off the platform. And so they converted you to the equivalent amount of USDC. And so when you got, let's say I had one Bitcoin locked up in Voyager, it was locked up for about a year. You'll see that within CoinLedger or Voyager, however you view your transaction history, you'll see a withdrawal of that one Bitcoin and right away after a deposit of 0.357, roughly Bitcoin, and right. that was the dispersion, that right there is not a taxable event in CoinLedger. All that's happening is the cost basis of your one Bitcoin, let's say it was $10,000, is moving to the now 0.357 Bitcoin. And so now your cost basis is artificially high for a smaller amount of asset, which means when you go to dispose of that Bitcoin, you will likely incur a very large taxable loss, depending on what your loss. basis was. Yep. But keep in mind, if it was a supported asset, you got access to that 0.357 Bitcoin in Voyager. And if you chose to take that Bitcoin off to your cold storage wallet and hold it or bring it to Coinbase and you haven't disposed of it, you have not incurred a capital or excuse me, a taxable event, which I mm -hmm. talked about, right? We haven't disposed of it yet. So you can't yet claim that loss. If you want to claim the big loss that essentially you lost out on 0.7 Bitcoin in this example from, from the Voyager right. Bank, you'd have to trade out of that asset. That's triggering the taxable event. And then you can write off that loss on your taxes. Now that's the supported asset side. On the non-supported asset, let's Let's come up with just a fake coin, XYZ coin. Let's say I held one of those in Voyager. The same thing happened is I, I, I got withdrawn one XYZ coin and you'll see an immediate, immediate deposit of 0.357 XYZ coin in my Voyager mm -hmm. wallet yeah. and immediately a conversion to US dollar, USDC. Right. And so let's say it was worth uh, $100. That's now the USDC I have sitting in my Voyager account. That because they disposed of that asset for you, you did incur a taxable event. So let's say you bought that XYZ coin for $1,000. They converted you out to USDC for a hundred bucks. Now you have in this tax year or when that transaction happened, a $900 capital loss that can be filed on your taxes. Um, and that's at a high level how it all works. Of course, any assets that were left in Voyager during they allowed a 30 day window for all, any of these transferable um, assets for customers to move them off the platform. If you did not move your assets, 
you were automatically liquidated to the USDC value of all those tokens mm -hmm. about in August, 2023, September, 2023. Yeah. And then you were mailed a USD check to your address on file yeah. Uh, yeah. with that amount. And so those are the mechanics of the dispersion, dispersion process. Um, and that's how CoinLedger is handling it from a tax perspective. You don't have to do any of this. You just click a button and all that gets handled in CoinLedger. Um, but you know, that's how it's being handled. And we have a bunch of documentation if people want to read up on exactly what's going on behind the scenes. Perfect. So let's just say a great, great response. Great answer. Let's just say that we know that they're trying to claw back some different monet, yes. some, some different amounts that they can get back from either three AC or FTX. So let's just say in the future that they're actually able to claw that back. Now, what happens to those individuals such as myself? So all of a sudden I got another, you know, 20% of my portfolio back and I'm like, Oh, this is pretty good. At that point, same, th same thing happens. Or can we just right at this point, write everything off and go, I don't think it's ever going to come back. So it's really up to the user. Cause let's go back to my Bitcoin case. Let's yeah. say I got 0.357 Bitcoin back from Voyager. And let's say I brought it to my ledger wallet just to hold, yeah. right? I'm not selling again. I haven't incurred a taxable event. So if at some point I get more Bitcoin back from Voyager, that would just add to that same position. And remember, my basis of spending, we, we said $10,000, is mm -hmm. still true in that amount of Bitcoin. So if I add another 0.1 Bitcoin, now I have 0.475 Bitcoin, but my basis still remains the original basis of $10,000 of what I had there. So... If you want to wipe the slate clean right now and realize what our likely capital loss is because you lost 0.7 about um, worth of value in the Voyager bankruptcy, you need to dispose and incur taxable events. Dispose of these assets. Of course, you can buy them back if you still want to hold them. Right. And if you wipe the slate clean, you know, you're kind of closing your positions. If at some point in the future you do get more income back from Voyager from the bankruptcy process, whether that's crypto assets or USD, that is a form of taxable income because keep in mind, you already wiped the slate clean. You already realized your all of your losses. And so by getting income in the future, that is just a form of income. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about this? Is there, and this would come back to, to the question about uh, the hacked wallets. Because I remember this was a couple of years ago, maybe last year, where there was only so much you could you could claim as a loss because people were like, hey, I'm in a boating accident and there goes my ledger. I just lost ten million dollars. What was me? Is can you still like is it is it like the maximum amount, uh, which is very small every year or have they increased that or how does that work? So hacked wallets theft is actually close to impossible to write off from a losses perspective oh, that yeah. those kind of that ability got closed in the tax cuts and jobs act under the Trump Trump administration. Oof. Um, and it's, it's much, much more difficult to claim a capital loss. Logically, now you could claim anything you want, right? The US is a self identifying system. True, true. But the law has closed a lot of the ability to write off meaning deduct from your income on hacked theft when it comes to property. How, okay, so so banking on that, is there a limit to what we just talked about with say FTX, Celsius and Voyager? Can we say like, if we had it, I don't know, 20,000, 50,000, 200,000, we could all just say that's just a total write off, like just give, using your example. Yeah, so the FTX and whatnot, those cases are different because they did file for bankruptcy. Um, it's the, the ones that I'm more referring to in my prior um, dialogue right there is if you yourself, right? Like got your, your crypto stolen from your ledger wallet or you somehow got hacked on FTX, it's going to follow a similar like bankruptcy process as Voyager and yeah. Celsius. And okay. those are going to be write-offs because you had some amount of asset, you know, by the fault of the company, they're going through mm -hmm. bankruptcy, you got back less and then you dispose of it and you're going to incur capital losses. Um, gotcha. There's, there's nuance to this. I'm simplifying. So if you have very specific use cases, problems, of course, I'd always recommend ta talk to someone who's well-versed in crypto taxes. You know, we have a bunch of folks on a directory on CoinLedger that you can go and reach out to. They're very knowledgeable. Um, everyone's situation can be a little bit unique. Yeah. And then just to, to piggyback on that, 
if you're on coinledger.io, links in the description, but if you come down here, there's a, there's a link that says find a crypto tax expert. If you click on that, they've got a whole plethora of different people you guys can talk to if you have any questions about that. Now, it's going to be, there's, of course, they're going to charge for those services, but I got to tell you, those services are worth their weight in gold, and uh, I cannot stress that enough. And then, and then also, before we move on to the next question, to to really dive deep into that question of can I write off lost oil and scam crypto on my taxes? There's a great article written on Coin Ledger by Miles Brooks, who has his master's of tax and he's the registered CPA director of tax strategy at Coin Ledger. I will link that also in the description so you guys can uh, take a look and go from there. So yeah, that article is going to cover this in detail, so that will be helpful for anyone who's in those situations. Perfect. So we've we've covered the bulk of it. Now let's get into some questions that I asked uh, just this morning. And people lo love to ask questions about taxes, even though people hate them. So let's just go through this. Wise Money Duo says this, not a question. But I think you should have them explain why it's so important to take responsibility for your taxes and pay them accordingly. Uh, I'm just going to say like this. I don't like to pay taxes, but I don't like jail even more. So that's my response. David, anything to add on this one? Yeah, I, I would echo this similar sentiment. Um, I also am a fan of minimizing taxes. But, you know, if you just choose not to pay taxes, you're incurring a large amount of risk. And sure, maybe you, you get away with it. No one ever notices. But you're incurring a lot of risk. And the, the penalty for tax evasion is steep. And so I personally don't want to live with that risk. Um, and so I think it's important to do so. Yes, exactly. Talk to uh, Wesley Snipes and uh, Al Capone. So uh, we'll go from there. Muffin asked a question. I had a pre-sale where the token staking rewards were harvestable and manageable between wallets in 2023, but launched on Uniswap beginning of January 2024, which is the first time I had to actually sell. Is this income for 2023 when I received these staking rewards, even though they weren't available to sell, or would it be 2024 moving into next tax season? Yes. So this is good. You know, it's a little bit more advanced case of what's going on here. And I'll break it down um, from how I, un how I interpret this question. Mm -hmm. So actually, Rob, I don't know if you can pull up the question again. Yep. Got it. Here we go. So you got a pre-sale for this token. So let's say you spent some amount of, let's just say Ethereum to acquire this new token. That's, that's often what happens. Number one, you're incurring a taxable event of your Ethereum because you just dispose of Ethereum for another token. And so you know, you're either going to realize a gain or a loss, depending on how that amount of Ethereum has appreciated or gone down since you originally acquired it. Second, now you hold this token, let's call it XYZ coin. And it, it sounds like it's giving you staking rewards, right? right? Those staking rewards, as mentioned by this user, she says, or he says, they're movable, meaning they have, as the tax world calls them, dominion and control over those staking rewards. It's clear in tax law that if you have dominion and control, you're realizing income at the fair market value of those staking rewards when they're hitting your wallet. Hmm. Now, okay. the nuance here is, well, what if this coin really doesn't yet have a, an established market, um, which is probably likely, right, if it's, if it's kind of this early token? Those staking rewards, yes, their income at the fair market value value of the token as while you're receiving them in 2023, but it's very likely you're realizing a very small amount of income. So I would let the user know, you know, you have to go find the fair market value for those tokens as they were hitting your wallet, and that's how much income you're receiving. Obviously, this is what platforms like Coin Ledger do automatically for you. Awesome. Then when you go and swap it on Uniswap, let's say that whole amount, let's say you've been drip staking rewards for six months and now you just lump some of that and you trade it for something else in Uniswap. Now you're, you're receipt, you're incurring another taxable event and you're either realizing a capital gain or a capital loss, depending on how the value of your tokens have appreciated and the cost basis in these tokens is the amount you've incurred in income. So let's say I received a hundred staking drips from buying this token and each drip was worth a penny, right? 2023, I would realize what $1 of ordinary income, right? Yeah. And then when, let, when I dispose of it, let's say I dispose of all 100 drips of those, that token for a thousand bucks. In 2024, I am realizing $999 of capital gain in that scenario. Gotcha. Very nuanced question, but a good question. So yes. we'll be muffin pretty good. How about this one? Making donations to nonprofits through crypto versus through fiat. Because I mean, here in Puerto Rico, I mean, we we have to uh, do donations to nonprofits, mm -hmm. which is great. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then some I do in crypto and some I do in fiat. So how does this work? Yeah. So because crypto is property, there's a few more nuanced rules. But the good thing is you still get the benefit of a tax write off when you're donating to 501c3 organization. Um, we also have a, a blog post that discusses the ins and outs. But at a high level, if you've if you're donating crypto that you've held for more than 12 months, similar to the long term capital gains bracket, you get to write off the whole fair market value of that donation. If you are uh, donating crypto that you've only held for less than 12 months, you're only going to be writing off your cost basis in that asset. So I would refer people to this blog post. It goes into even more depth, but the benefit is still you get a tax write off for donating crypto as a form of property. Yeah, and I did this in one of my videos, matter of fact. And so, and so tell me if I'm wrong here, which is crazy. <clears throat> I have $10,000 worth of, of, uh, of Ethereum. And then I hold it for less than, than, than a year and it goes to 20,000, right? And I say, you know what? I'm just gonna donate all, the, all this Ethereum is worth $20,000. Cause that's, I'm a charitable guy, right? If it's less than a year, are you saying that I can only write off $10,000? Right. You can write off your basis in the asset, which is annoying. That's but insane. That's... Why can't I? Well, that's the IRS. So you're saying that if I hold for more than 12 months, whatever. Yeah, I think I... what the law is trying to protect against, you know, this is the law is written for property as a catch all. There's many types of forms of property. And ah. I think what they want to catch is people who are saying, oh, I bought this. It's worth a ton of money now, Rob. I've held this for a month. <laughs> And I want to write off the fair market value of this piece of art, right? Um, and so that's what it's protecting against on that side. Protecting us harder. Fantastic. All right. So how about this one? Can we migrate our imported and compiled TaxBit account transactions in the coin ledger? I've used TaxBit for years. They're doing away with their, con oh, I didn't know this, away with their consumer facing service and I haven't migrated yet. Yes, you can. Um, we don't have like a direct integration with like, transfer your tax bit account, it creates the same account in CoinLedger. Um, but we have our whole support staff is trained. We've been helping a ton of these tax bit users get migrated to CoinLedger. And the other good thing is we've completely made the product free for tax bit users who have used tax bit in years past. So if you need to, you know, get up to speed ah. with CoinLedger, your 2021 reports, your 2022 reports, we're making those free to tax bit users. So just get in touch with our support team and they'll walk you through all of that. Hey, man, that's pretty good. All right. Uh, BGD says, does the, IRA, does the IRS allow a summary of crypto gains losses or does it require every transaction to be reported? I think this would be like if you get audited, probably every transaction, but how does this work out? So just technically speaking, um, yes, you have to report all of your taxable events. Um, mm. This is annoying in crypto because there's a lot of them, but technically speaking, yes, you do actually have to report ah. all transactions. This is why, okay. So this is why when I send it to my CPA, it's like a, just a boatload of information. And she's like, okay, great. And then she just sends them over. I gotcha. Yeah, what's happening is the 8949 itself will get consolidated, but you also attach essentially a long file of just like all the transactions alongside so that, of it. Ugh, have fun with that. Mm -hmm. Felix asks, uh, will future recovery be treated as new income? I think we, we asked, we answered this actually. This was about the, the Voyager Celsius FTX issue, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, Jimmy says some exchanges don't hold reports past quarterly. How can I use CoinLedger to verify account for yearly transactions? Yeah, this is a really frustrating problem. Some exchanges make it very difficult to, to get your transaction history for further out than like three months at a time. Yeah. For these exchanges, one, just start making it a habit to download that three months uh, really yeah, every yeah. month you should just be downloading that um because our hands are tied as well if an exchange is like nope we're not going to give you your transactions for further than a year out first you should email their customer support saying hey i need my full transaction history to do my taxes please give that to me most times they'll give you the, the full stuff you just have to go through the extra hoop of hitting up their support team <laughs> which is annoying which is um annoying. but to answer his question, I would just keep your account fresh if you're using CoinLedger. You know, every month refresh that data, um, and then you won't have that problem because we store all of that data forever. You'll always have access to it. Awesome. Okay, and then last question, which is, do I need to report my S coins I traded on a Dex because 
who cares? It's on a dex. Nobody cares. No one's going to catch me. Yeah. It just goes back to what amount of risk do you want to carry with you in life? Technically speaking, that is a taxable event, taxable activity. You're incurring some amount of income that needs to be reported on your taxes. If yeah. you choose not to report that, that's on you. I can't make you, but you're, you're incurring some amount of risk that you'll carry forward for some amount of time. Exactly. Me and David are not financial advisors or your dad, so right. do whatever you want to do. Exactly. And that, we're, just, we're just here to give you the best information. All right, David, another fantastic showing. I We appreciate it. Look, everybody, the links that we just talked about, everything we just talked about, there's a links in the description. You can check those out. But again, uh, make this a consideration and because it's uh, tax season sneaks up on us and it gets very quickly. So it's going to help you save a lot of uh, heartache and time and frustration. So, David, thanks so much for stopping by again. Thanks for having me on. We'll see you guys later. All right, guys. See you.